yourself on the east coast, possibly scooting your way up to Canada, keep your eyes open. Hiding deep in Vermont's northeast kingdom lies a quaint little town called Lindeville. To some, it may seem like just a speck on the map, a wasteland of sugar maple and cabbage cheese. However, if they only knew, beyond this typical mountain town, live some of the most rare athletes on the east coast. As a member of this community, I consider myself fortunate to live amongst some of the most intense individuals I've ever met. From summer to winter, you'll find these dedicated few scattered amongst the rock and ice, taking on extreme challenges with determination in their eyes and a sense of freedom in every breath. Kinda cool to be scared every once in a while, at least a little bit. It makes you, you know, feel alive, as opposed to just sitting around and, you know, feeling worthless. I think it started uh, through snowboarding. You know, I just uh, ride my home resort, which was nothing more than a hill with a few lifts, and then uh, just started taking our, our snowboarding to the woods. And uh, once we outgrew that, we uh, just started making our way up to, to bigger mountains and just like mountaineering as a whole really came into place. The best part of uh, winter mountaineering uh, would probably be just getting outside and, 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 and the rush of the activities that we do like, you know, ice climbing or, or s snowboarding. Just the rush of it really. It's, you know, at that moment in time, it seriously feels like nothing else matters. Like it's the, the best moment in the world. And uh, as soon as you, it's over, you're just, you know, already seeking for, you know, the next moment. Drew, along with many outdoor enthusiasts, is continuously pulled from his passions by the burdens of work and school. However, some have had the opportunity to turn their love for the outdoors into a successful career. What I really enjoy about working at Linden State is you get a nice balance between getting out in the field and doing some uh, technical skills and then also coming together in in the classroom or on campus setting and talking about some of the theory behind those skills. And, uh, and, then, and then the process can So I'm um, talking about why leaders act the way they do, what kind of leadership's effective, that sort of thing, um, and balancing those two things out because both of them are equally as important in the outdoor world to have those technical skills and then to understand some of the theory behind why what's happening is happening out there. Pop all of this ice out. So what you want to do is you want to be about 10 degrees south and go in like that. I grew up in uh, the Pacific Northwest and I was always active in the outdoors as a young person, but I really didn't get into things like climbing and kayaking until I was in college myself and I signed up for a rock climbing course and a kayaking course and then things really took off from there. So it's neat to be in at that level where I, I really understand uh, 
where college people might be coming from when they're getting introduced to these sports. Does it matter if it's still your um, You're right, it does. Um, I bet you, yeah, this is interesting. Everybody, come, come feel uh, this screw that Meg has. It's, it's very loose. I think the beauty of it is it, it can it can feel like so many different things. Um, sometimes it's uh, it's joy and exhilaration if you're uh, really on a, a great, beautiful uh, climb and doing your best and feeling within your comfort zone. Uh, that's definitely a, a beautiful experience. It can also feel like uh, nervousness and a, a metallic taste in your mouth if you're way above your last piece of pro and uh, a little bit worried about the weather or that sort of thing. But um, it's got a lot of great emotions, and I think the best part about it is, is just uh, being up there on the mountain with a group of people that you have come to know and trust and uh, working through those emotions, whatever they are. Unfortunately, few individuals have the luxury of a job like Kelly's, yet they do their best to make the most of the little time they have. Oh my God! <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> I got into mountaineering first, I guess, by uh, starting out with the, the uh, adventure-based program management major here at Linden State. There's a lot of appealing aspects to mountaineering. I mean, it can be rewarding in a lot of different ways, like anywhere from the planning that goes into it beforehand into like all the skills that you need to know while you're doing it. You need to have trust in your partners and good cooperation with people in your group. Plus you need to know like the whole skill base of climbing techniques and just things that you need to know to be safe. Oh yeah, this rock is nice and flat. <laughs> Ow. Have I grown from mountaineering? Yeah, I suppose I have, you're definitely. Um, you just kind of look at things differently when you're mountaineering, like assessing the risks and whatnot, and you can transcend a lot of those planning skills and things like that into your everyday life. Seth's so gnarly, he climbs in the rain. <laughs> Another cool aspect that's very attracting in mountaineering is the cultures that you can encounter while you're doing it. My, my trip to Nepal was just amazing because the culture there is so absolutely different from anything here. It's funny, they're, they're definitely really, really nice, very open, friendly people. You have to attack it with an open mind and kind of lose all of your personal space because they're really curious people, but they don't mean to be like rude or disrespectful at all. It's just the way they function. A lot of the rewards are totally intangible too. I mean, it's a very intrinsic experience, I guess, sometimes. Just, I mean, even reaching the top of a mountain doesn't necessarily make it a successful trip. Rope! I guess whatever you get out of it emotionally and just however you grow from that experience is really what it's all about. It's not nice, not really busy clouds. They're inhibiting my sunbathing. 
and I think I just smell like shit.